Okay, the uh, that's just a. It's been a resharpened three-quarter inch end mill, so it's got about a 680,000 diameter. But uh, it's in. I touched it off to the top of the material. I'm gonna come up here and select the appropriate. It's the profile finish. Select enter. That code enters into the machine. That program number enters in. And uh, I always like to come down and just make sure that I got the right depth set. I got it set for minus 300 thousandths. I'm gonna actually make it go down to 500 thousandths just for giggles. So come over here, set it to minus 0.5. And then we go here, enter and replace. And there it is, it's a half an inch. It's, uh, it's kind of arbitrary, it's gonna clear. It's only gonna be cutting um, it's only going to be cutting down, you know, to about here. So uh, I'm just dropping the end of the cutter down below. But uh, another thing I've been meaning to tell you is that now that I've done this profile, all these operations are on the same CAD profile. So once I do one or two, I'm pretty sure that the profile, I can trust the profile pretty well. Um, but... Uh, what I got to do is just double double make sure that the uh, that the Z height, the plunge height, is correct and what uh, what it's going down to. So we're about ready to let a rip tater chip on this. I like to move my tool, like I said before, off the end of the part before I do anything because it likes to come down right at the beginning. So we're all set. Z height set. I touched off the top. Let her go, and off we go on the last profile cut. This has only taken 15 thousandths, so uh, I can let it run pretty quickly. I'm going to leave it run at 100%. I think I got it set at 10 inches a minute. I'm going to blow a little air on it, and I'll bring it back when it's all fixed. Okay, next stop is the uh, facing. Got the facing tool in. And. Uh, Lift that up here and we'll take it down to the uh, far end. We're just going to face this uh, piece off. <clears throat> I usually just take, start with about three thousandths of a face cut and see if there's any uh, areas that don't get cut and then I drop it down a little more accordingly. So I'll do that and I'll bring you back when that's finished. Here's the face and the tool taking a cut. The uh, camera's strobing it. It's it's turning a thousand RPM, and I'm moving at about uh, about six inches a minute. Gives a nice clean finish. All right, the face cut went pretty well. As you can see, right here is a little bit low, but it's so close. It's probably a thousand, so it's not worth recutting the whole surface of this thing just to get rid of that one little bit. I'll just deal with that one little little spot right there. This is all going to get buffed and polished and. The radius cut's going to take part of that off anyway, so uh, radius cut's up next. Okay, got the roundover bit in. By the way, I've been meaning to mention, uh, I've got this system on my CNC mill. Uh, it's called a wrap adapter, and I don't know if you've ever used it, but it makes tool changes a snap. Um, very easy. And uh, these are all the tool holders, the wrap adapter holders to hold the tools. Um, check it out. You can buy them on eBay. Um, they used to be really expensive. Uh, they still are kind of, but uh, sometimes you can find a good deal. I think I got 30 tools and a master body for, uh, what the heck did I pay? 300 bucks, I think. And I got like 30 tool holders and a master body for like 300, 350 bucks. But uh, well worth it. It makes tool changes just a snap for this. Okay, we're back to roundover. I got the roundover program up here. Uh, checking the depth. Again, the profile is pretty much set now. I know that, but what I really want to do is check the depth. And I'm going to take 150 thousandths on the first one. And I know just from having done this in the past, um, the first couple of times, I just had to keep stepping it down, stepping it down, stepping it down. And I know that 190 thousandths is um, to the point where uh, this part of the tool will start digging into the top of the uh, die. So I've got the uh, diameter set up for the inner part of this uh, tool. The diameter's uh, off of here. And then the flat part hits on the top of the uh, die at 190 thousandths. So 
um, I start with the first pass. I use the same program, it's just the first pass. I set it at 150 and uh, let her chooch. Got the speed turned down. Got to make sure I'm at the beginning of the program. And uh, we'll let her go. I got to keep air on this one too to keep the pool cool. So uh, we'll start with it and then uh, I'll bring you back once it's finished. But you get an idea of what it's doing here. It goes in and it begins the round over cut. Okay, coming around the nose of the die now. Get the round over a bit. Once it gets over past the uh, nose here, you'll be able to get a see of it. You'll be able to see the profile when it's cutting. I just keep a little bit of air on the tool to keep it cool. And there's a little bit of WD-40 on there for lubrication. There, now you can start to get to see what it's doing for the cut off, for the round off. It's just leaving a little bit of a track right there where the lower part of that cutter is. Um, just leaving a, a skin mark there. So I've got it set pretty good. I'd probably back it off about a thousandth or so yet. Yeah, just increase the tool diameter um, a little bit and then the cam software will back it off. I'll bring you back when this is done. Okay, that first round overpass is done. I'm just going to leave everything messy because I've got WD on there. I'm just going to uh, run the second op for the second pass with it. And I just want to show you that I did set the depth on the 190 here. So that should give me a pretty good... Uh, should just leave a maybe a trace of a line along the top of the die as it cuts and again I just know that from experience and having cut it I've had some of my dies I've had it cut in a little too deep and uh, I've had to hand work that line out of there but 190 gives me just about what I need to have for a good look when we come around the nose, I'll bring you back. Okay, coming around the nose of the die now. And uh, as soon as it makes its way out of the way there, you should be able to see it's getting a much better round over effect. I think I'm going to try and lower this two more thousand and see what I get for a uh, result of that. Because I'm not close to touching yet. I think I can get a little bit more round over on that. Better radius than that, and uh, I'll just drop another uh, 2,000. Um, these radius fits are very, very susceptible to the height. You gotta really watch it. And the top of this, the top surface has to be flat. If it's not, the the uh, the bottom portion of the cutter that cuts in at the top portion here will dig into your material and leave a line and look like crap. So it's kind of a touchy tool to use, but once you get used to using them and understand how they work and all. Okay, while you were away, um, I uh, I did lower it to 192 thousandths, and then I actually lowered it to 193 thousandths. And uh, on the 192 pass, these radius tools are are really finicky when you use them. They're not able to clear chips really easily. That's the air compressor. Okay, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by the air compressor charging. Um, these roundover bits are very finicky to use. They uh, they don't clear chips very well, and they will heat up and weld up on you in aluminum faster than you can even. You'll you'll be going along thinking everything's fine, and all of a sudden it just it'll weld up on you. And uh, so they're real finicky to use. You've got to keep a lot of air and a lot of coolant. If you got flood coolant, you're probably okay. I just uh, I do it using air and uh, and a cutting fluid on there. In steel, they're a little less finicky, but in aluminum, because they don't remove the chips real well and the heat builds up really quickly on them, you got to be careful. But anyway, now you can see the radius on this that I'm getting. And I've gone down to 195 thousandths in the past, and when I do that, it'll leave a line around there where the top of the tool here, where, where this edge right here that leading edge right there will start digging in the top of the material so 
I'm going to call that good, so all we have left is one undercut pass and we're done with this die. Stand by. Okay, getting ready to do the last undercut pass. I got the undercutting tool in there. I uh, put some WD around the edges of this thing. And I uh, check my depth here to make sure that I'm going down to 1.02. It gets really bad if you miss a zero there and put 1.2. I've learned that the hard way. Um, so anyway, it's ready to go. Push the button and away we go. Again, I wanted, I did a really good touch up on the top of this thing because it's really important that uh, the depth of this be just right so that uh, it cuts to the right height up on the side of the wall. And I'll show that to you when we get around the other side. I'll bring you back when we get on the other side. So here we are coming around that last nose on the last uh, undercut pass. Once the tool moves past a little farther, you'll be able to see. So right now, the top of the old cut, uh, you can see it was right there. And on the new cut now, you can see it'll be up. It's up about 20,000. It brings it up right to the underside of the uh, of the radius cut. It just makes it the uh, cutter sticking on a piece of aluminum that uh, is my uh, spacer down there. That's a noisy here. But it's, uh, so I can get a good elevation shot here and you can see what it was to what it is now. I think it's only taken off, uh, well, I moved the tool in 10 thousandths on the diameter, so what that actually ends up being a cut, I'm not sure, but, uh, my chips are coming off there. They're about a thousandth, I think, something like that, but they're fairly long, so I keep the, even though it's a low chip loading, um, it's a long cut, so... And I run it a little bit faster on this one because it's like a cleanup path. But uh, let's see what it makes for uh, chip time. But uh, I'll bring you back when it's finished. Okay, our die is finished. Last pass is made. That's uh, what we're looking at there. You can see the undercut. And again, that undercut pass, as I was telling you before, the last undercut pass it comes up the side and it comes up right to the bottom of where the round over pass comes so they come together right at that one spot all right it's time to take this uh, fixture plate off of the mill table and take the uh, die off and then uh, we'll have a, a little bit more to talk about and we'll be done bring you back in a minute okay so i got the uh, die out of the machine and i took it off the fixture something interesting happened this is the first time it's ever happened to me the tool didn't cut all the way down through the die block to the form block and uh, it did that all along this edge and I figured out why it's actually pretty simple um, it was thicker than one inch check it out it's like uh, an inch and 29 thousandths thick 28,006 so that's the first time that's ever happened to me I guess uh, it doesn't matter that it's that much higher and I can take this down by hand it's only hanging on by about five thousandths of material but um, I'll just file it down by hand and clean it up but uh, overall it was a, uh, a success um, great looking die and uh, I'm gonna get it marked here shortly and put it on the stack with the rest of them but uh, Oh, there's a little more hand working I'm going to have to do. Uh, I always have to do it on these. And it's just a matter of uh, where, where the undercut here meets the round over cut here. It leaves just a little bit of a, like a ridge or just an uneven spot. So I just, uh, I just hit it with a file and uh, kind of flatten it out with a, with a good uh, single cut file and it'll uh it'll bring it right down and clean it right up but overall uh good cuts you see those little lines right there those actually come from the cad drawing um in areas where these splines i cut these uh, i'm sorry i uh when i cad these i make these as splines but 
if I try to make a spline go all the way around, it doesn't get accurate in this corner. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll stop the spline in here somewhere, and then I'll pick up another small spline and then do the same thing, and I break it up. And everywhere you got a junction, you'll see a little bit, where did it go? You'll see a little bit of a line there where the machine picks it up, and it's like, you know, it's a thousandth maybe. It's weird, but just a little bit of uh, filing again will take that and smooth it out. You can see it in the light, but if you try to feel it with your finger, you almost can't even feel it. But uh, just another interesting uh, facet of this. But that's form block. Uh, that's how I make them. And uh, just trying to remember if there's anything else I wanted to tell you about them. Of course, what these are going to be made for is uh, making wing ribs for an airplane in uh, the press, and I showed you that at the beginning of the video. Anyway, thanks for your attention, and uh, I'm going to get these videos cleaned up and get them posted onto YouTube. Take care.